Good morning, boys and girls. Today I want to talk to you about something very important, which is getting loose. Getting loose before starting your artistic journey for the day. Hopefully for the day, not just uh, the first time ever. Um, when you are getting loose, the purpose of it is, well, it's getting in the right mindset, you know? There is something to the kind of marks that you make. So let's talk about why getting loose is important um, and taking the time to do it before you start painting or drawing. There's a big difference, and um, I've mentioned before my, my buddy Dan Nelson, he's got a great YouTube channel, you can check it out. Um, he, he really made this very clear to me where, where he explained that there's a big difference between a confident, bold mark with purpose and intention versus a, a tentative mark where you're like, and then maybe it, it, it comes down, like, it's a confidence that you get from loosening up and having that confidence in each mark you make. So how do I get loose? I think that let, let's just start with like my exercises. Okay, well the first thing, and I, I shouldn't be sharing this, I like to rub one out before I start doing art. So, what I suggest you do is get an eraser and get your arm in the motion. And you see how I'm using circular motions? It is getting your whole arm involved, okay? If you take a blank page, whether or not you're going to, um, <clears throat> you know, confidently go about doing your artwork, if you think about that blank page you know, stark white page that's scary or that new uh, sketchbook. I've actually kind of learned this since we, we one of the, the, the well, the, the first artist problem we did was on new sketchbook syndrome. And I go through a few exercises, but since then I've kind of learned that I can also sort of overcome it without having to make any marks. I literally like just prime my paper, this might seem so silly, with an eraser. I don't know, it just all of a sudden, it breaks the preciousness of the paper without it breaking the paper or putting marks on it that I don't want. To get loose, you can't, you can't be like this, you can't. <laughs> I've got a big ass pad of paper, okay? I've got Jerry's colossal deluxe sketchbook. And I told Katie to get the big one, the 1824, because I'm not, not messing around today. And I've also got my jumbo. This is the jumbo jet black. Everything's big. It's go big or go home. Because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get loose. I'm gonna get me loose marks. So again, you're not, you're not here. You're not, eh, eh, eh. I don't know why I have to make that noise, but that's the noise people make when they hold my pencil from the side, right? I'm gonna get my whole arm involved from the shoulder to my fingertips, okay? And we're just gonna start to challenge ourselves. Now here's the challenge. The first challenge is I wanna continuously make this circle without it changing size too much and you'll see it's not as easy as you might think so it's an exercise in getting loose right you're trying to get the whole arm involved because what what I, I mentioned Dan Nelson earlier he he always said that the part of your brain that controls your arm is a better artist than the part that controls your fingertips it was very smart um, now we're going to do another exercise, okay? We're still holding the pencil the same way. Now we're going to try to test ourselves on ellipses, okay? Ellipses are one of the basic things that when you're in your first drawing class, they want you to master because essentially an ellipse is, you know, uh, an oblong circular shape. We're trying to avoid that, but more importantly, we're trying to avoid hard edges, okay? We're trying to make ellipses and you just keep going and keep going, and keep going, until you do it. Now, doing this just for a couple minutes before you get started in your art, I think it will take very little time for you to start seeing a big difference when you finally get to your piece. Once you've done these exercises, once you've warmed up, once you've loosened up, you will be very happy with the results you get. I'm gonna show you one other exercise that I think is really good, um, and actually Amy Gardner-Dean, the host of uh, Jerry's live which streams on Tuesdays at 5:30. why am I plugging this in the middle of my video because I love Amy on Facebook and YouTube the Jerry Zanarama YouTube channel and Facebook page uh, this is one of hers that she taught me where she said try to control 
variances. So I'm going to continue with the circular motion, but I'm going to do circular um, ellipses. But, but watch, watch what she was showing me here. Let me do it from the side here. So she was saying, all right, so we're going to start small, and then we're going to get big, and then we're going to get small. Will, this is so unprofessional. The camera's going down. What is happening? Um, and I think that's really cool. And also, I, I always kind of like how these doodles come out. Like, there's something kind of, I don't know, Macy's Day Parade float about them. That, that's, that's, it, 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 well, let's see if I can make a croissant, a croissant. Now, we talked about those tentative marks and those confident marks. I want to show you a really interesting piece of artwork that um, I, recently, I recently purchased. Now, um, we'll throw that up on the screen here, okay? There's just something about it. It's simple, nothing that um, overly intricate, but I found that the lines really spoke to the confidence of the artist, that they, they knew what they were doing. All right, so what I want you to do is, I need everybody at home, okay, I'm gonna wait, all right? Get a pencil and paper. What I want you to do is, and this is just one of those things, I want you to write down what you think I paid for this piece of art, okay? You might think it's worth $100, you might think it's worth $7, you might think it's worth $1,000. Just a guess, just write it down. I'm going to reveal, because I'm still waiting for you to write that down, what this cost me, okay? I guess technically it was close to $10,000. Yeah, because that's how much my daughter's preschool costs. All right, this was a piece done by a two-year-old. And a two-year-old, they ain't holding back, okay? It is that inner child that I'm talking about, all right? My daughter did this piece, and I'm not so delusional to think that, you know, like, hey, look, at she's an ex-Picasso, but look, the marks are purposeful. They're actually purposefully unpurposed to some degree. But when you watch her, She's out there, man. She's not worried what you think. She doesn't care what I think. She certainly doesn't care what I think. She's out there to express herself, so we gotta unlock that, okay? This is my Cobra Kai shirt. Now, if you haven't watched The Karate Kid, do it. What are you waiting for? It's awesome. But, uh, regardless, Cobra Kai is actually a Netflix, not Netflix, a YouTube original series now, and it's awesome, and it's awesome. And it takes place, I don't wanna say from the point of view, but, but basically, Johnny Lawrence, who was the villain in the first movie, um, is the main character, more or less. And you kind of see his teaching style and what this all means. And when you take it outside of the context of karate, in my opinion, it is a good, a good message for life. So like, there's a, like for an example, there's a, 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 a student he's teaching, and you know, he wants to uh, ask a girl out. And so he basically refers back to the Cobra Kai slogan, which is, you know, if you don't ask her out first, somebody else will. Make sure that she knows that you mean it. It's the old saying, act or be acted upon, all right? So with your art, you want to be in control. You're in control of the pencil. You are going to act. You're going to make purposeful marks because otherwise somebody else will draw on your paper before you get there. No. Um, or otherwise you'll always kind of feel restricted. So you think about that piece that my daughter did. She was just having fun, man. She was having fun, she was exploring her fine motor skills, she was exploring her gross motor skills, and she was not concerned with what anybody thought. So unburdened by perfectionism or judgment, we need to clear our minds. And, and there's something meditational um, about, first of all, doing these exercises. It does put you in a state of hypnosis. Now, I know that when a lot of people hear the term hypnosis, they think, you know, cluck like a chicken when I say the word soda water rhubarb, um, but there is real hypnotism, and I, I can probably explain to you a time where you've been in a state of hypnosis. Have you ever been driving down the highway, maybe you're on a road trip, you know, and you've been driving, you look at the clock and it's noon, you listen to your music and you look at your clock again and it's one. Well, maybe it didn't feel like it just went by like a flash, but if I asked you to tell me details like, you know, what were some of the things you passed? What were some of the things you saw? Most likely, you, you, you won't really remember. You, you, you kind of get into this trance-like state. It's, it's like, unless there's like severe traffic or things that you're maneuvering around, your mind just sort of kind of melts because you're just doing this one task, this one task. So in that, in that 
meditational state, that hypnotic state, um, is where you can get that kind of serenity that you need. So when you're doing these exercises, first of all, you shouldn't be talking to a camera. You should be doing this in the quiet privacy of your own home or studio, or I guess you can do this anywhere. The point is to clear your mind, to empty your mind and relax. Because the bottom line is, the more relaxed you are, the better you are at anything you do. Anything you do. If there's worry, anxiety, um, if there are fears, it is going to keep you from doing your peak performance. And that goes for your art and uh, your relationships and your sports and even when I watch TV. That's right, I enjoy it more when I'm relaxed. It's true. So when you're doing these, breathe along with it. It might sound a little hippie, and everybody here knows that I hate hippie, but there is something very nice, because you also really know that I'm very kind of high-strung and OCD and high energy, so finding these little things that just give me a little release are helpful. And I do see a difference in my art by just taking a little bit of time to loosen up before I paint, before I draw. Now, you don't have to get the biggest jumbo, blackest pencil. You don't have to have an 18 by 24 um, pad, although these pads are phenomenal. And I'm not just saying that because it says Jerry's on it. These pads are really good because the paper, this isn't like newsprint. This is really like a nice quality thick paper. And I like working on it. It feels nice um, on, on the wrist. But I would challenge you to work larger because if you're trying to do this on a 9 by 12, even though you're not, let's, let's all do it together, you're still going to be like, and you see how I'm not moving anything but like my hand and maybe my elbow? We need to get things in there that the whole body can participate in. See, I'm actually shifting my weight between my heels. Okay? You don't know what's happening beneath this table, and trust me, you don't want to know. What does every non-artist say? I can't even draw a straight line. I don't really know many artists that can draw a straight line, but you shouldn't be drawing straight lines. I mean, why are you drawing straight lines? What are you trying to achieve? Straight lines are not very interesting, okay? I mean, I might be able to quickly get a line. It's not completely straight, and you might be thinking that your you know, line looks like that, but Depending on the type of art you're doing, it's okay to make your straight line intentionally not straight. So instead of having this, I don't want to waste too much. So instead of having this straight line, you can add visual interest by making it intentionally not straight. Again, depending on your art and the kind of things you like to do. All right. Um, another good thing. But take the time to loosen up. Take the time, breathe. If you go into it with anxiety, if you go into it with, I don't know, I just, I just say if you are stressed out while you're doing art, you're doing it wrong, okay? Art, even though it's not a hobby for every one of you guys out there, and I understand that some of you guys need to meet deadlines, you've got commissions, you've got galleries that want new work, you feel pressure, That's, it makes it even more important for you that you don't allow that to burden you because it will show up in your artwork. You need to take the time to feel confident and feel good about what you're making. And yes, as artists we are perfectionists and I imagine that that will be an artist problem eventually, uh, perfectionism. But, but I think that overall when you're in that state of calm, the, the saying is don't make promises when you're happy or decisions when you're angry. Have you guys heard that before? Okay. And it really makes a lot of sense to me because essentially, you know, we, we have these, these super highs where we're like, everything's great, I'll do whatever you want. And these super lows where you're like, you're dead to me. Um, it's in these parts in between, these plateaus in between these highs and lows. It's in that hypnotic state, okay? It's in that meditational state. It's in, it's in the warm up. That is when the mind is ready to grow because you're not caught up in your emotions at the moment you're living and you're breathing and you're reflecting I think that that's a, a special place that we don't spend enough time in as a society this place of like all right processing and like self-reflecting in a constructive way all right and look I'll be the first to admit I spend the majority of my time putting myself down I mean it's something that I struggle with I work on 
I do. I, uh, believe me, I'll be putting myself down as soon as we cut. I, in fact, I've already started a little if it's not showing in my performance. So it's something that anybody can struggle with. And with your art, getting loose really, really can show itself in your final art. So let me ask you, how are you holding your pencil? Are you going or are you loosening up? There are times for fine detail work, but I want you to be conscientious of those warm-up times that you are intentionally being larger than life. You are exaggerating the motions, the movements, and trying to breathe through the experience. Now, there is, um, you know, I'm doing this, you know, I'm standing at a table, but when you're painting, it's a slightly different story. Now, you can still do these exercises before painting at an easel. In fact, you could do these on an easel. You can set this colossal sketchbook up right on your easel and, 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 and do it. In fact, I mean, if you're using acrylic, I don't, I mean, this paper is not, I wouldn't suggest it for like, you know, it, it's fine. It's just, you know, it's, the, it's, it's paper and you're gonna paint acrylic on it. But getting loose, the anatomy of a brush uh, for, for oil and acrylic for easel painting is designed why we have that long handle so that you can stand back from your artwork. And yet more often than not, I see a lot of artists with these long handle brushes all choked up on the front of the brush. And they're not getting back, not only from their subject, but you know how they say like, look away from your art for, you know, like, like you know, if you get all caught up in it, literally standing further back from your art will give you, guess what, more arm movement. If I'm holding my brush like this, now here, let me show you this Chelsea Classical Studio. Now this is already a particularly long, long handle brushes. This is their Nuevo brush. Um, <clears throat> if I'm if I'm here at my canvas, am I am I in a good spot to do? Okay. I, tentative. It's uh, restraint, right? But whoop, you come back, and all of a sudden, hey, I can. I'm like in a Harry Potter movie, man. I can expecto p painter. You know, you, 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 can, you can get the whole arm in there, that whole movement, and you can have that freedom of expression. Art needs to flow like the force. It needs to flow through you. It, I, I mean, I know that that sounds like a, I'm making a joke, but it really does. It develops in your brain, and then it manifests, manifests itself in a physical way in your art. So you have to let that flow through, right? Now this brush, what makes it really unique to me, and I think this is pretty cool, and I didn't come up here to sell you a brush or anything, but since I'm here, I might as well. <laughs> um, these Nuevo brushes, they are already designed to be further back, but they also come with these awesome things that go on the back, which it's a counterbalance. So if you look, it's, it's the weirdest thing because by adding weight, they've made the brush feel lighter. So what do I mean by that? So if you're choking up all up on your brush here, you've got a lot of weight on one place while this is dragging you back here. But if you counterbalance it to where you're supposed to be holding it, the entire brush experience feels a lot more natural and comfortable. I, I, I just found this very interesting. And when I first got to see this brush and hold it, I thought it was a little, I don't know, tchotchke, stick, sticky. I don't know, it just, it sounded like, okay, it's another thing, but really there's something there's something, forgive me for saying this, because this is very salesy for me, and if you've been watching my videos, you know that I'm not a hard pusher. I just want you doing art. There's just something very natural feeling about it and very expressive. So I was, I was impressed, is all I'm going to say. I'll just leave it at that. The Nuevo uh, Chelsea Classical Studio brushes. Um, available on sale at Jerry's Adorama. See you there. How do you loosen up? Do you have things that you do that are different than what I've suggested up here? Do you think that it's important to be in the right mindset? Share your stories below, share your advice below. It's always good to have these forums here for people to let people know what they A, do, B, what they don't do, and C, when they don't like me. I mean, that's, that's basically what I'm looking for um, in these comments and everything in between. So put in the comments below what you do to loosen up for your art. Do you take the time? Will you start to take the time? Will you take my advice? Will you heed my warning? Do not fall into the trap of not warming up. Get loose. You will enjoy your painting better, the painting experience. You will enjoy your painting better, the final product. The more relaxed you are, the better you will be. So take this little, it's a little treat to yourself, this little time to get loose. Because believe me, you will thank me later. You might hate me right now, but you will thank me later.
because your art will improve exponentially. That's right. A little promise I'm making that I can't back up with paperwork, but it's a thing. Look it up. Look it up. So you can follow me on Instagram if you enjoy my shtick, my humor. Uh, we also have a channel called uh, youtube.com slash it's Mike Not Jerry. Uh, as I like to say, a subscription to the It's Mike Not Jerry YouTube channel comes for free with your internet provider, a very special deal that I set up. So I hope you'll join me on there. Um, it is not appropriate by any stretch of the imagination. There is extremely offensive stuff on there. So as we kind of come to a close for artist problems for 2019, I will say that going into next year, We've been doing a lot of different projects, a lot of fun stuff. So I'm not anticipating having these on a scheduled basis per se. Um, I want to do more of the prove -its. I want to do new things. So uh, check out uh, our channel and look for new videos, new content. We're always trying to evolve and grow. I'll still do artist problems, but um, they just won't be as kind of structured and scheduled, which might not be a great idea for a YouTube channel, but we've got so much great content. If you want structure, Tuesday nights at 5.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, there's your structure. Amy Gardner Dean, every Tuesday. In two years, she's missed two? She's a machine. She's a machine. I love her. Look how much time I'm spending plug plugging Amy. She is not a robot. She creates. That's right. So thanks so much for watching. Be sure to hit the bell to be notified. Like the video if you've enjoyed the content. And subscribe to our channel if you want to be a real artist. Too much? And be sure to subscribe to our channel if you love art and want to have more art content showing up on your YouTube experience. I don't control the YouTube, but I know that when I start YouTubing one thing, that's all it floods my thing with. My, my thing is completely flooded with Indian men rubbing each other's heads. <laughs> you watch one video and then you get put in a box. Artist problems, the one thing you can do to make your paintings better. But don't you think that getting loose is also like, because I don't disagree with what you're saying. I think you're absolutely right. But don't you also feel like people are always like, like, how do I get loose? No? no? Okay. We're going to title this whatever Katie wants. Seriously, it's fine. <laughs>